What's up everyone, this is George from You're Like A Musician and this is episode 3 of the Beats In My Bedroom podcast. Now everyone, I hope you've been enjoying the podcast so far. Episodes 2 and 1 obviously should be on all the streaming platforms now. Um, But I didn't want to take too much of your time today. I know you've got plenty of other things to be listening to and plenty of other things to be doing. So I just wanted to teach a quick lesson today and the point of today's podcast is to teach you how to invest in your music career, the best way to invest in your music career. Now the approach that I've always taken is that I want to succeed in my 9 to 5 career like music wasn't even a thing. What does that mean? I was quite strategic in the career that I chose. Um, that was set aside from music. I basically wanted to be able to um, achieve just as much as I would if I wasn't trying to grow this thing on the side. Um, So I was quite selective with the jobs that I was choosing when I left university. And ultimately, I already had some experience in digital marketing and specifically SEO. So that was the natural route to go to. And in my second year of a university, What did I start doing? I was studying music production at university. um, And in my second year, I started to realize that, do you know what, probably getting a job in this straight out of uni, especially when I'm living in a town called Northampton in the UK. I, I am an hour and a half away from London where all the opportunities are at, but I didn't really fancy doing the travel too much you know it costs a lot of money and it costs you a lot of of your time and it's bloody exhausting because I have had to in my career at the minute travel to all sorts of places and I never liked it and I don't really want to do that Um, so going to London wasn't really an option I wanted to stay in Northampton I was more obsessed with this idea of doing it from my third bedroom like I am right now, doing it at home and having that kind of balance in my life where I could work wherever I wanted. That's what I wanted. I found digital marketing and it suited what I wanted out of my job. Um, And I've been in it ever since and it's about, what, eight years down the line now. So basically my second year of university, I started researching generally what digital marketers, SEO people get paid. And I was happy with what I saw with the general salary range for a starter. And I thought, hmm, I'm already pretty good at this. It's set aside from music. There's a lot of career progression in it. Uh, There's a lot of specialist stuff I can learn. And the money's good. And I was good enough at it where I knew that when I went to work in the day, I generally didn't have to bring something home. And if I did, I just cracked on and didn't complain. But the two main things that really appealed to that career prospect for me was the fact that I could learn the knowledge that I was getting from doing it as a job and apply it to my side hustle, which a lot of people do. It's not a new thing. A lot of musical people actually end up in marketing. It's The, the statistics are bloody mad. I don't know exactly what they are, but I know that they're crazy because I meet a lot of them, uh, trade events and things like that. And basically, the idea is is that I want to grow in this career like I would, like music wasn't even a thing. And how do you actually do that? Well, once you get one of these jobs, like marketing or SEO, you'll be on a good salary. The mindset that you need to approach it with is that when you leave the house in the morning, you are not a music producer. You are whatever that job says you are. You need to focus on it and develop your skills within that job, within the time that you are there and fully, fully commit yourself to it, whether that means occasionally reading an article or a tutorial on on said skill on the weekends, then do it. It only takes 20 minutes. You've got 24 hours. Come on. And when you're in that job, double down on whatever it is that you need to do. Become the best at it. Research what it is to become the best. Look at the best performers in that company that you're in and try and do more uh, and try and do more set the example get those pay rises and when you've got those pay rises 
what you're going to do with that money. You're making a lot of money now. Are you going to spend all of it? Yeah, some of it. But let's say you're making plus 25 grand a year. There's plenty of money to live on, pay your bills, especially if you're in the UK. If you're in the US, I'm not sure. I know it depends on where you live, just like it does in the UK. But if you're living in somewhere like Northampton, that is a good salary. That you'll have plenty of money to play around with if if you're living in the same area that I am um, and you're on that sort of money. Um, but if you're on 25, for instance, live like you're on 22. And what that means is don't spend as much of your available money after paying bills and things like that and paying your mortgage and your rent and things like that and your phone bill. Um, use a certain percentage of it to pour into foolproof marketing techniques now if you've ended up in seo and if you are in seo right now if you're not i'm not going to go too much into the explanation of the specifics of what i'm about to talk about but i'm just going to outline it invest in foolproof marketing techniques so for instance if you're an seo don't want to repeat myself invest in building links you'll know if you're an seo that you'll get nowhere without building links if that is the traffic source that you're trying to build for said side hustle invest in links 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 now links uh, generally when you outsource them from a you know contextual sort of supplier so for instance fat joe i think gotch seo is one does cost a bit of money but investing in those links is ten thousand times more powerful for the longevity of your business than one Instagram post. Yes, the Instagram post may go viral. That does happen for some people and it may give you a monumental boost in everything, but it doesn't quite happen for the majority. It's important to be on those platforms for branding things, for instance. But if you can master organic traffic and it turns a profit for you, you're on to a winner. But not everyone chooses SEO as their main sort of traffic sort of source. So if you're trying to invest in in, in things that hopefully work, uh, obviously give paid ads a run. But bear in mind that if you're investing in paid ads, obviously it does take a bit of trial and error to make those things work. So be prepared to lose some money if that's the thing that you want to, if that's how you want to build it. If that's how you want to build your empire with paid ads. But generally, in my experience as an SEO, I would say if you're going to pour any of your money into it, I'd say do that first. Do SEO first over paid ad first. <laughs> Definitely try and see if your business idea can generate income from an organic uh, uh, point. Then I, I would advise that 10 times over. I've been consulting now for a long time and it's always just been the foolproof thing for me if 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 it doesn't it, it if if you can't make the business work from an organic perspective don't put too much of your time into paid ads you may scale traffic but ultimately what you're trying to achieve um in this whether it's seo or, or paid is a conversion rate and you need to see if things will convert first so don't be too daring about trying to pour everything into paid ads first sometimes it does work but sometimes it doesn't it depends on you give both a try for instance and set yourself a reasonable amount of time to do that now if you're only 25 and you've got maybe i don't know 500 left over uh, a link or two will probably cost you about 200 then you're only left with about 300 to play with and you've got a lot less money there uh, but you don't have to invest in two. You can I invest in one, for instance, if you're using one of those um, outreach um, services like Fat Joe or, or Gosh SEO, like I said earlier. Um, a good like domain plus 40, um, domain authority rating plus 40, whatever, um, will generally cost you about 80 quid, as far as I know. So that's a lot of money. But if you do something like that over a period of, 12 months to two years every month um you're really going to be somewhere it does take a lot of time to build this thing it's not the easiest if it was easy everyone would be doing it and i know a lot of people are doing it now but not everyone's doing it it's still all of this is still a very young 
industry, trust me. I've spoken to a lot of people over the past seven, eight years, and uh, I'll get a lot of conflicting opinions, but it's it's not easy. It's not easy at all to grow a brand and to make uh, and to make money from this. It, it it can be made a lot easier once you've got certain numbers behind you. For instance, subscriber counts, uh, data from um, different AIs like Google Ads, if that, if that's your way, and things like that. If you've got the data, Facebook Pixel data and things like that. Obviously, it will get easier over time once you've built your brand. When you're first starting off, be prepared to fight a fucking war. Because that's what this feels like the majority of the time. But if you're doing it and it makes you happy, why would you stop? I've been fighting at this for four years now maybe i think when i when i first started the, the actual online thing it, it itself and it's getting better each year and it's my commitment to continually sticking it out that that that, that makes it worth it and the more i show up i think um the more people are not gonna say no because they're gonna think damn this boy's consistent so guys i want to wrap episode three up here and just to reiterate the points of the lesson that I'm trying to teach today is that progress in your nine to five just like music wasn't even a thing. Become successful in your nine to five thing because ultimately at the end of the day, your nine to five is your angel investor. You would have heard that in a lot of different places, especially if you listen to this, I'll guarantee you would have heard someone else say that. Your job is your angel investor. You've just got to be smart with how you spend your money and how you make it. The business that you are working in right now only became successful because they took a chance and they invested in themselves to build that business. You have to do exactly the same thing with your side hustle. So guys, this podcast will be on all streaming platforms, your Spotify's, your Apple's, your Google's. It's going to be everywhere. So share, do all of that lovely, jubbly things. Uh, do all of those lovely, jubbly things. I'm as English as hell. Um, and I look forward to episode four.